Since the beginning of time, human beings have worked with intention, have made choices about how things look and the function that it will have and how long it will be used and by whom. These are all decisions that are made within the context of an intention for the form being created. Whether we're looking at the Aboriginal handprints in Australia on the cave walls, or we're looking at the Japanese tea ceremony, or we're looking at a modern day concert with lights, or we're looking at the creation of a painting like the one behind me featuring the Blessed Mother and Mary Magdalene in conversation. Intentional creation has been something that human beings have had as a part of their life since we came to earth. When we don't create with intention, that's when there can be challenges because we're not taking into consideration the impact that it's having, who it's really for, and what the future of the creation means for us and the planet. I'm Shiloh Sophia. And the work that I've been doing has been focused in this domain of intentional creativity for 25 years. The focus of the work has been to literally explore a philosophy of how creativity can have an impact on our lives, bring mindfulness to -to day-to-day activities, and also to create works of art that reflect the longings and the breakthroughs of our soul. Today, I thought I'd tell you a little story and give you a really clear example of the power and impact that living with intention can have and does have on our lives. Because our belief in our community, which is a global guild of intentional creative beings, is that this way of approaching life is life-changing and that the movement of mindfulness that's sweeping at least the United States and Canada right now is such a huge emphasis for individuals to begin to become more and more conscious about what they're working with and who they're being. And yet so much of the mindfulness movement focuses in the mind and in meditation. And if you're a busy bee and filled with chaos like most of us, creating a clearing for to to find true mindfulness can be difficult. When we work with intentional creativity, we actually uh, can bring our chaos to the experience and still have a feeling of peace and clarity through the process. So I'm holding a bowl that I created um, over 22 years ago. This bowl was made out of the clay from our family property up in Mendocino County. We affectionately call it Terra Sophia. I was working with the master teacher and mentor and also the woman who helped co-parent me with my mom, Karen McLeod, and her name is Sue Hoya Sellers. She learned intentional creativity from her mentor, Lenore Thomas Strauss, who worked with the themes of image, intention, and inquiry in the 1930s in her work through the New Deal with the Roosevelt Foundation. This was passed to Sue and to our family. He was already practicing it in a particular way. And then on to me and the women that I would serve and the men that love them. And this bull was a part of that first day. I was wedging the clay. And we had dug this clay from the ground and we'd been working on it, which seemed like months to me. And I was jokingly saying to Sue, wow, can't we just buy clay at the store like the normal kids? And she said, nope, this is how we do it. You've got to put your intention into it. And I said, tell me more about that. And I felt my soul just lighting up. And she said, what do you care about seeing transformed in the world? And I said, I care about ending violence against women and children. And she said, when you're wedging the clay, which is this shape like kneading bread, put your intention into the clay. Imagine that it's going out to those who need that love right now. And it really is. That moment changed my life forever and has been the spark of a global movement of tens of thousands of people gathering in a deepened consciousness about how creativity can impact ourselves, 
our families, our relationships, our work life, our very lives, our relationship with Creator. It's so pervasive. It's one of those things, though, that is almost invisible because it's so obvious. And so part of my work has been to pull out distinctions about what intentional creativity really is. And I was delighted to discover uh, tons and tons of language, story, mythos, and metaphor about what it is to work with intention. And so I wrote it down so I could share it with you. So this is a writing called Shaping the Bowl, Four Layers of Intentional Creativity. And in this bowl, there's a little design with stars, and there's a woman representing the Blessed Mother on the front with the two eggs, the mandorla shape, the vesica Pisces. And I put my intention for wholeness and unity into this bowl, which it still carries today. In understanding how powerful intentional creativity can be and the impact it can have on consciousness, it can help to give language to an often invisible part of the process, the part that happens within your heart. There are four layers of intention to consider and that one can use while creating. Let's use the shaping of a clay bowl as our example. Here it is. Number one is intentional form. You're shaping the bowl to be of use for eating or drinking or display. It has an intention or function. So in this bowl, I was creating a series called Altar Bowls, designed to hold feathers and sand and stones. And it has done that, and it was just now holding tea. <laughs> so there was a form. I wanted it to be beautiful for use. That's layer one. You make something. You make a soup. You make a painting. You make a path in the garden. You make a business. Form. That's simple intention at the level of mind. The second level in our work is connected with the beloveds, the others, those we serve. So the second layer of intention is that the bull would be a blessing or beautiful for the intended recipient. In this case, I kept the bull. But for that first art show, I had about 35 bowls, and they all went out to people. Those are the intended recipients. You infuse the bowl with your blessing for the future person that will use it so that it will be beautiful to them and perhaps desirable for sale. So you're making this item. You're thinking about who is going to get it. Either it's a gift or you're going to put it in a store for sale or it's a part of something else. But you're imagining the intended use or display of that. For larger scale works, it would be for people to experience it. You get the idea. But the point is to think about what the business world would call you know, the client or the end user. And you think about them not from a commodification, why will they purchase this, but actually how will it bless them? Third layer is you. You want it to be a blessing and a beauty for you. This is where intentional creativity really comes in. While you create, you enter into inquiry and openness about receiving the gift of the creative process. You put your personal intention into it, and you are changed by it as you work and as you witness the resulting form of function and of beauty. I love the word talisman. It comes from the Greek teleo, to consecrate, to make something sacred with your thought, with the way that you work with the mindfulness that you bring to it. And so as I'm creating this, not only am I thinking about who's going to receive it and how they're going to use it and if it's going to be a blessing, but I'm also receiving the blessing for myself. This seems simple on one hand. On the other hand, if you don't choose for yourself to be a witness of your creative process and to be changed by it, chances are you won't be conscious of the change. Now, I've worked with thousands and thousands of women worldwide. I've worked with them before I knew how to talk about this, before I knew how to ask them to interpret what they created as a message for them. And I've worked with them after, when we actually draw huge meaning from what re reveals itself onto the canvas from the subconscious or even the unconscious. Without making an intentional choice to be the witness of the process, the information simply doesn't come through in the same way. That's how you become conscious of it. And this was sparked in a recent conversation with my brilliant mom, Karen McLeod, the poet, when she was talking about intentional creativity and said, yeah, but does it work if you're not conscious of what you're doing? 
Lots of people are creating lots of things, but if they're not conscious about it, just imagine going to a restaurant where there's care taken with the food and how it's organized on the plate. There's consciousness in how it looks, how it feels, and also how it tastes and how your body feels or places where you go where it's just not really tended. And as I'm eating it, I'm wondering what that person was thinking while they were putting it together. Did they care? Were they thinking about my consumption of it? This relates to everything. But becoming conscious about your interaction with these things changes the potential impact and breakthrough and is where mindfulness comes in, that you can actually be a part of life as a witness, witness experience. You're changing while you're witnessing and the thing being witnessed is also being changed. And then the fourth layer is everyone. You are offering this act of creating as a collective offering to others and to earth, not just the intended recipient, not just you, but the entire world. How does that work? It's a wonderful concept. As you work, you hope and intend that this loving loving offering can be a prayer, that it makes a contribution in in a quantum way, travels out to your intention. And I remember that day when Sue said, imagine the intention, the love that you're putting into the bowl, into the clay at that time, wasn't a bowl yet, going out and actually reaching the women. And I imagined with my mind, arcs of light and love reaching to the people that I cared about the most. And she said, believe it. And I did, clearly. It is here in the four layers that consciousness through creativity comes alive. It is here that we discover more of who we are and just what we are here to cause and create. Art becomes ritual in the hands of the creative who cares for all beings and for creation itself. Consciousness. Imagine if we could live our lives that way. I am a testimony to a life transformed through living through creative, conscious intention. And so are the thousands and thousands of women and their families and the children who are being raised in an environment where creativity is not just supported, but encouraged as essential, as an essential part of life. We are creations living inside of a creation. And some of us believe by a creator. And so when we create we enter into a cosmic space, a divine flow of potential that changes us, changes others, and makes a contribution to the world. And it works on every single level of life and transforms our capacity to be present and to fall in love with the universe. In a painting like the one I'm doing now, when I'm dealing with things that are happening in the world, we call this praying in dots. Even at a painting like this, and I think of and look at what's happening in the world around me, things that are concerning me, and I just pray for all those beings. And if there's been a terrible tragedy, the number of people hurt, and I'll put in the same number of dots for the number of people hurt, and even include those who caused the hurt, if there is someone, and their families. By doing that, not only do I allow myself to remain conscious to the suffering that's happening in the world, to not turn away from suffering, but to actually integrate and transmute it alchemically through the process. I am, in essence, creating resiliency for myself so that I can be present and do the sacred work that I'm here to do. I believe everyone has a sacred assignment, whether we know it or not. My sacred assignment is intentional creativity. And I've invited you and thousands of others to join me in approaching life as if everything is sacred and as if you get to be a part of that wonderful weaving. It's an invitation to co-create with life. Many blessings. Blessings.